What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's talk about this. I thought this was pretty cool and funny. I set my friends on fire. I've been around for what, 15 years or something now? And you can think what you want about their music, but they were clearly always really smart guys. And in particular, they've always understood the internet well. You remember the video on Smosh back in 2007 or eight or whenever that was, and Smosh was like the biggest thing in the world, it was huge for their career. I think that's the one thing that like broke I Set My Friends on Fire. And they did other stuff like they did the uh, cover of Crank Dab by Soldier Boy. They've always understood the internet really well. And they've still, as far as I know, they've been putting out music this whole time and stuff. Been a little bit quiet for a while, but we just heard from them recently because here's what they did with the When We Were Young Festival. So you guys are all familiar with this. I'm sure you've seen it. The emo festival with every fucking band that 30 year olds listen to in high school, which by the way, just added a second and third day since I made the video. I think it's kind of weird. It's the same thing on the second and third days. They didn't spread it out across three days. They just duplicated it three times, which is kind of weird to me. But anyway... When uh, when We Were Young Festival came out, I set my friends on fire, like a lot of other bands, were not happy at the lack of invitation to play the festival. So, you know, they posted the flyer here and then like, Live Nation, are you serious? Every band did that and hey, why not, right? I mean, why not ask, right? Who knows what could happen? But, you know, lots of bands did that and nothing happened because it's like, well, the, the, the lineup is full, who cares? But they took things further. <laughs> they bought... When we were young fest.com. Let's see where that goes now. Yep. So if you go to when we were young fest.com, uh, it goes to their Facebook, which is funny because as it says here, the festival's actual URL is when we were young festival.com. But they noticed that some people were posting when we were young fest.com. And so they said, fuck it, let's buy the domain. And then they said, Live Nation, you can have it back if you just put it on the fest. Oh, and we own the Instagram too. Very funny. Like, this is smart. They get it. A little aggressive, but turns out it actually worked because a couple days later, they announced this. When we were young fest, I set my friends on fire official offer. They've blacked out who it's to and from, but after cons after careful consideration, we'd like to offer I Set My Friends on Fire the 1210 slot on One More Young Festival. The attention from social media was too much for us to ignore, and we're happy to add you to the festival. Please respond with your decision by noon on Monday, January 24th. And so then they posted this. This has been the craziest week we've had it as a band in years. This was never about being on a festival we didn't get invited to. This is all about finding a way to expose the fact that the big bad click of agents and promoters that runs the industry isn't ever so powerful after all we never actually cared about being on the festival and if you look into it for two seconds it should be pretty obvious the tantrum was a joke yeah i don't think anybody thought that they actually cared but it is interesting they have revealed something about the industry we literally went from photoshopping a fake cnn article to actually being on the front page of yahoo news within two days they got tons of media coverage for this press outlets that have turned down every press release we've sent out regarding our band in the last 10 years we're dying to be the first to cover the story. Our Spotify numbers doubled overnight. We've had over 20 million impressions across social media in the last week. Our tour coming up next week is the best selling tour ticket wise we've had since 2011, all from spending a couple bucks on a URL versus the five or six figures we would have had to spend on social media ads to get that reach. I'm sure we've clogged up your news feeds a lot this week and I'm sure it's been annoying, but we hope we've been able to make you laugh along the way. Yeah, we'll probably never have another AP article written about us and we'll probably never get booked by Live Nation again, but that's fine because those things weren't going to happen anyway. Too many people in this industry take themselves way too seriously. And at the end of the day, everyone needs to laugh a little bit more, especially in this day and age. Stop fearing the man. Just find a way to beat them at their own game. Nate, Matt, Chris, Connor, Jimmy, and computer. I set my friends on fire. P.S. That's love. So I thought this was really cool because what it showed is exactly what they talked about. That like, you know, there's this idea from a lot of musicians that... The music industry is run by this cabal of people who will never give you a chance and blah, blah, blah. And that's partly true. But ultimately, the way that you can create your own opportunities is just a little bit of creativity. A lot of people wait around expecting someone to come along and hand them a career. Like, oh, we're going to put out our stuff and then some manager or booking agent or whatever is going to come along and 
sprinkle their magic fairy dust on us and now all of a sudden we're getting it signed and it's gonna be we're gonna be big and blah 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 that's not how it works the only person who can really really get your career started is you and the answer starts with creativity which is what these guys have always had their music is obviously not the most accessible thing in the world i think they're probably not the easiest people in the world to get along with either but if you're getting attention, the industry cannot ignore you. Again, I've said this a million times, but remember, this is not the music industry, this is the entertainment industry. Your job is to get attention. Also to make music, yes, but like the idea that just creating music and putting it up on the internet somewhere and somehow someone's gonna discover you and hand you a career, it doesn't happen. It's bullshit. It doesn't work that way. You have to go create your opportunities. And that's what these guys have done multiple times. Just doing something interesting and noteworthy and different. A friend of mine, uh, Andrew Wade, he's a producer who's done a bunch of stuff like Data to Remember, The Ghost Inside, and Wage War, stuff like that. Very smart guy. He said something years ago that I thought was just brilliant. And it seemed like kind of a smart ass thing to say because Andrew's a smart ass, but it's true. What he said was, nobody will care about something you've done until you've done something that people care about, which sounds like a catch 22 and it kind of is, but it's also the truth. Like you gotta do something that is new and different and noteworthy if you wanna cut through the noise. You have to. And that's what I set my friends on fire have always been able to do. With Cranked At, with Smosh, and now with when we were young fest and they've been doing this for 15 years like this is not an accident they didn't get lucky once they've done it multiple times regardless of whether you like them or give a shit about them getting added to this festival or not whatever what i hope everyone takes away from this is the value of creativity that it's not about money money cannot buy success networking and stuff like that yeah that helps but at the end of the day it is about creativity and unfortunately a lot of people in music are lacking creativity. They want to just make a fucking genting in a colored room video or, you know, head banging in a dirty warehouse video. They want to just do the same shit everyone else is doing. And then they wonder why they don't get anywhere because you're not doing anything different. You're not doing anything that anybody would care about. These guys understand how to get attention and that is really fucking hard to do. So respect to them. I think it's cool they pulled this off and uh, yeah, I think it's cool. Very inspiring. Just reading the chat here. From the band's perspective, would you play the same set for all three days or would you change your set hoping to get people to come to see you multiple times? I don't know. I, I mean, I'd probably just, I'd play the same set. I mean, who wants to come up with three set lists for three days? You know what I mean? It's a story. Local bands get mad because the music press doesn't cover them. Well, make it a story and they'll talk about you. Exactly. That is exactly right. What is the story? Why would anybody write about you or care about you or cover you? Why? And I'm not saying that to be mean or put people down. I'm saying that's the question you have to answer in order to get, you know, people to care about you. Why would they? I think a lot of this novelty music like Necro Goblicon and Eskimo Cowboy and stuff, you know, to me that's corny, but I get it. Like it's obviously attention worthy. A video like Hypa Hypa, of course you're going to pay attention to that. It's ridiculous. You know, everyone else is making headbanging in a grungy warehouse or genting in a colored room. Of course you're going to watch Hypa Hypa because it's different. That's what people need to understand. It's like, what are you going to do that is different and interesting? This is a good question. Has a festival ever done something like this? I've never heard of the exact same lineup over multiple days. I don't think I've heard about that either. I don't love that. I mean, what the fuck do I know? This is Live Nation and Andy from Chain Reaction are the ones putting this thing together. They know a lot more about putting together shows than I do. This thing sold out 80,000 tickets in like a day and a half. So what the fuck do I know? But yeah, that's weird to me. I don't, I don't really get it. My buddy is a videographer and just filmed a music video for a local band <laughs> where they gented in a colored room. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move on because there's so much to talk about today. 